Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tool they are working on. Today we have Toby. Hi Toby, tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Hey everybody, my name is Toby. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Topeka Data and we make an open source data transformation framework called SQL Mesh. So SQL Mesh is a, a tool to make data scientists, analysts, and engineers more productive. It allows you to write SQL or Python code and orchestrates it all. It can understand SQL, so you don't have to manually define your dependencies. Uh, it understands incremental modeling. It has state, so it understands all your changes. It's a very efficient and powerful new way of doing transformations. Ah, that sounds very interesting. I would like to see it in action. Cool. Uh, let me share my screen and I can do a quick demo. All right. So this is SQL Mesh's free and open source UI. Um, this is all included as part of the open source package. So as you can see here, this is a model definition. A model can basically be thought of as a table. As you can see here, there's a little bit of metadata, the type of model it is, the name, how often it should run, which is a cron job, the owner, et cetera. And here's a SQL query that defines the model. Now, one really cool thing about SQL Mesh is that it comes with column level lineage. For example, in this project, if I wanted to know, for example, how something like order amount was calculated, you can see here that in my column level lineage, I can easily see that it's the order item is the um, product of the item times the quantity. Okay. So I've already created a production environment, as you can see here. And if I query here, I can see uh, that it has some data. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a development environment. Now in SQL Mesh, creating a development development environment is very easy and it's it's basically free. So I've just created a dev environment here. I'm gonna click plan. So SQL Mesh takes uh, inspiration from tools like Kubernetes where it tells you what's gonna happen before you actually do it. In this particular case, because I haven't really made any changes differing from prod, I don't need to do any work. SQL Mesh will just create views pointing to the exact same tables as prod. So that's why it's called a virtual update here. And when I click run, uh, you can see that it instantaneously created a dev environment. No work was done. So if I just prefix here DB dev, you can see that I have a direct kind of clone of prod without using any clones or any additional work. Now let's do something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to make um, I'm going to make a change. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do something like round item price to the two decimal points as round. I'm going to save that, and as soon as I save it, SQL Mesh automatically can detect the change that I made. I directly modified item D, and downstream I've indirectly modified two tables. So when I click plan again this time, SQL Mesh will tell me. Uh, that I've made a non-breaking change, right? SQL Mesh is smart enough to understand that all I've done is I've added a column here and none of the downstream jobs, right? They they don't reference that column. So no work needs to be done. So you can see here that the only model that needs to be backfilled is item D. Now, what happens if I make and a break? And feeling yeah. here it means that uh, we have a dependency, so we need to do something with the dependency, right? And so we actually mm -hmm. have to rerun those queries in order to make kind of our queries the correct state, right? We have to rerun. And by rerunning, you mean like go back in the past, right, and recompute it? Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Okay. So now if I do something like this, I mutate a column and perhaps I do a filter here, right? Save that. And I redo the plan. This time, SQL Mesh will say that this is a breaking change, right? SQL Mesh knows that this is a breaking change because I haven't simply added a column. I've mutated an existing column and added a filter. And in this case, it knows that in order to make this new SQL state correct, I need to actually do some work. I need to backfill all three tables in the dependency graph. Does that make sense? Cool. So as you can and see, you're now doing I'm this only it. on the dev environment, right? This is so only the dev environment. environment is untouched. So you That's experiment exactly. with the dev environment, you apply changes, you backfill, and once everything is fine, you apply the same things uh, to the prod environment, right? That's exactly right. So if you see here, I'm going to query against dev, and you can see here um, in my query editor that I do have some new columns here, right? But if I go back into prod, it should be untouched. 
you can see in my prod query that there's no new columns here, right? So I have an isolated dev environment. A really cool feature that we have is uh, data diff. So you can see here that I could compare the uh, model that I have in dev with the model that I have in prod. So if I just run this, you can see that SQL Mesh will detect that I've done some changes. I've added in this new column compared to prod. I've mutated this by 99%, right? And I've also dropped some rows. So with SQL Mesh, it not only is easy to create development environments, but I can also do data diffing. So something else I want to show now. So let's say I, I like my changes, it's all good, right? Now I can switch to production, right? And now I can run plan again. So this time, SQL Mesh will tell me again that compared to production, what I had there, right? I have a breaking change. It's the exact same changes that I made. And this time, there's no work that I need to do. There's nothing to backfill because SQL Mesh knows that I've already backfilled all those jobs in kind of my dev slash staging environment. And if I want to promote it to production using other traditional tools, you would have to recompute everything all over again. But with SQL Mesh's virtual environments, I can simply swap the view pointers and do this upgrade instantaneously. So if I click this button, um, it runs. And now you can see that in my prod instance, I have all of my new stuff that I've done, okay? So some other cool features that we have are we have uh, Python support. Maybe so I have, have a question about that one, like this instantaneous uh, promotion. What yeah. happens to the dev environment after you do that? Like, the do they just point to the same the... kind of point? Uh, exactly. Or... So the way it works is that we have an abstraction called a physical layer and a virtual layer. So SQL Mesh will store and materialize all the tables in the physical layer. And that's not really touched by the users. And then for the actual uh, virtual layer or the views that you actually look at, like what, what we're creating here, this is just a thin view that's pointing to the correct virtual layer. So it's a simple select all statement at the proper, proper table. And so in this case, dev still exists. We haven't touched it, but now prod is pointing to the exact same tables that dev is. Right. Because like um, in my practice, I was a data scientist. Mm -hmm. And what did, we did sometimes for a dev environment, we used a sample of prod data, let's say 5 10 percent uh, percent of like the original prod data, because like the prod data is huge. Then we would play with the sample. After everything works, we would roll uh, out the thing to the prod data. But here, exactly. I guess the the way you approach it is different because that's exactly right because uh -huh. when you're doing sample data it's not really representative right yeah. and if you're doing machine learning or creating a model your model is going to be different testing against five percent of the data versus the actual data so this allows you to efficiently and cost effectively use real data in dev right without having to sample or anything like that now we we do work with companies that have very strict data, data privacy rules. And so those companies cannot have any debt, any data, dev like production data in dev. And so for those cases, we do offer a solution for that. So the developers locally have access to a separate dev warehouse with only fake data, right? But then we'll leverage our free and open source CI CD bot. And the CI CD bot will have access to prod and leverage the virtual environments for blue green deployments. So when you make a PR, it will kind of use this whole mechanism. And then when you merge the PR, it will swap it. But the developers in this flow would never touch any production data. Interesting. Okay, I interrupted you. So no please continue with. <laughs> Just a couple more things I want to show. Uh, we have true Python models. So not every workflow can work in SQL. So if you want to write PySpark, Snowpark, or Pandas data frame, you can do that as well. And you get all, all the same kind of benefits. And we also have a documentation mode here, uh, here, right? And so if you just wanted to kind of show, you know, all the metadata and call a level lineage, you can do that as well. All right, that con con concludes my quick demo. How do you run this? Is it just Docker Compose app or something more? So this is a simple pip install. You would just pip install uh -huh. a project and you just do SQL mesh path to your project and then UI. 
Uh-huh. You can also use the CLI if you're more comfortable with that. And you can also use a Jupyter Notebook. So we have kind of three ways of using SQL Mesh. And where is the data coming from? Like, I assume you have some sort of like Postgres uh, uh, database or something like that. You can use any of the modern warehouses. So Postgres, MySQL, DuckDB. you can use DuckDB, BigQuery, Snowflake, Databricks, et cetera. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And so the if you are trying out SQL Mesh, it's very easy to get started. SQL Mesh has state, right? So we understand every version of every model you've ever had. And so by default, we store that in your warehouse. But for production use cases, either you can use our cloud offering where we have hosted state for you, or uh, we have instructions for you to set up your own Postgres instance to store your state. And when it comes to the code management and version controlling and uh, whatnot, <laughs> like how does it work? Is it similar to Jupyter where you start Jupyter in a particular folder? And then it looks at all the files there or like my question is more like, okay, now I have some code, like how do I put it to Git? Like how does it synchronize with the file system I have with my local file system? So it works with Git, but it, it's not directly tied to it. So all the things I did in you, that you saw in the demo didn't use Git at all, but obviously most companies will use Git. And so what you can just do is you can kind of commit all your code wh- whenever you want. If you want to synchronize SQL Mesh to your Git, we have an open source CI CD bot, which automatically will kind of deploy things through PRs, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But in practice, I assume that, let's say, I want to run SQL Mesh at my company. Mm-hmm. So then I would have a centralized instance where I run it. So all the team members have access to that. Um, right, could be like in running in VPC or whatnot, right? So when I log in to that instance, the code is already there, right? So no, it's not something so... like it, it's not coming from my local file system. It's centralized for me and my colleague and uh, my other colleague. If all th- three of us will log in, we'll see the same code, right? There, there's no kind of centralized system. Uh, you can either just develop locally and then use Git to kind of synchronize okay. your changes. Um, or you can use a CI CD bot. So we, we you don't need to have a VPC hosting any of the code or anything like uh-huh, that. All, the, all the, the state is stored in the database. So kind of the database is uh-huh. the state. Okay, now I now I got it. So mm-hmm. I run it locally and then because all of us connect to the same database, we all see the code, right? Exactly. And right. then there is a CI CD tool that allows us to sync the code from the database to our Git repo. And so all three of us, because of the bot, will actually have, um, well, like if I make change and then my colleague makes change, eventually Git, our Git repo will have Exactly, the and the bot will deploy to your environments. And when you merge, uh-huh. the bot can then automatically deploy that to production. And you also like, since it's not a centralized instance, where like every each one of us runs it locally how does actually it work when it comes to running like i saw you have like cron tech like daily or mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. so it must have some it must run somewhere so there must be some computer right. somewhere so you can run it however you want but it's, you like just it in, but in github you can set up like a cron that runs every like five minutes and then it uh-huh. will figure it. out automatically what runs I see, I see. So like, again, your CICD bot will, or CICD tool will take care of that. Exactly, yeah. Ah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so how many people are working on uh, on this tool? Um, well, our company has about 20, 20 people at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyone outside? Like, do you have outside contributors? We do. We have, we have um, many kind of large companies using and contributing to SQL Glot, or sorry, SQL Mesh these days. Um, so yeah, we're, we're open to PRs. And if somebody wants to contribute to what, how do they go about that? It's pretty easy. So we've got some issues on our GitHub, or if you're using SQL mesh and you want to contribute, feel free to come in, come to our Slack channel. We have a Slack channel, tobicodata.com slash Slack. Come in there. You can ask questions, you can make a PR and we're very quick to respond and, and review your PR.
So the best way to contribute is first to join your Slack, say, hey, I want to contribute. This is right. my idea. And then you would guide the person. We'll guide them. Exactly. Yeah. That's probably yeah. the best way. Do you plan to take part in Hacktoberfest or anything like that? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Oktoberfest? Oktoberfest. No. I don't know if it actually happens this year, but like the idea there is that like uh, there is a community of people who want to contribute to open source and they encourage them to do that. I see. And I've you never do heard it throughout that. October. So it's like Oktoberfest, okay. Oktoberfest. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've never heard of that. So uh, <laughs> I see. Oh, maybe you can check, like, if you're sure. actually looking for more contributors. Anyways, what are your plans, like short-term plans, let's say, for the next quarter? Uh, well, we're really focused on kind of developing and improving our cloud experience. Uh, we also are um, greatly improving SQL Mesh core today. So SQL Mesh uh, recently or very soon will launch a ClickHouse uh adapter. So we'll have click out support. We just started working on Athena support. Um, and for our cloud offering, we're, we're working on building a in-house scheduler so that you can kind of orchestrate and run all of these uh, within our cloud. Okay. So then uh, people don't need to use CI CD, right? Exactly. You don't have to manage that yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, what is it? Uh, in which language uh, did you write it? Like, is it Python? Yep. Rust? Everything is uh, Python based. Uh -huh. And you have very nice UI, like it's really slick. Ah, thanks. Well, that, that part is written in JavaScript. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it's not Python, yeah. So last question, do you have any advice to anyone who is watching this? Well, uh, if you do data transformations, ETLs or anal analytics, and you kind of want to try out SQL Mesh, uh, give it a shot. We, we think that uh, it's kind of one of the best ways to do data transformation these days. Uh, so hop into our Slack, say hi, and we're happy to kind of guide you through things. We're very responsive. Okay. Thank you, Toby. Amazing tool, amazing demo. And for everyone, please do not forget to give them a star. We will include, we will include the link to the repo in the description. So thanks a lot, Toby. All right. Thank you.